Hi. Um, I wanted to make a funny centerpiece for the 4th of July. Um, basically, I used the tricolor LED lights, and I used a light sensor. And um, I have really learned a lot today. Came in as a complete rookie. So I made a kayaking robot. So I um, used the distance sensor and um, LEDs for the um, eyes, and then um, the servo to make the oars go back and forth. Very simple. Very <laughs> awesome. Programming it, uh, fascinating. Easy, easy. Uh, I hope. <laughs> if I remember in the fall. Great. Um, my name's Brian. Um, I spent a little too much time on the art portion. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have anything programmed just quite yet. Um, I was setting up my uh, two four-way LED lights um, where the water can look blue or it can transition into violet. Um, and then I had one servo set up so that the dolphin looked like it was you know, consistently jumping. I was inspired by the mechanical arm and wanted to turn it, I, I thought of John Travolta immediately. So I programmed this so, um, I wish, ideally I'd like it to program so that it only responds to Bee Gees songs. But for now, it just responds to any audio. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> so we have the disco ball, and then the lights go around, and his arm goes up and down. Um, Stay in alive. Stay in alive. <laughs> So I use the vibration, I use the motor, and then the LED. Um, I mean, I really enjoy doing the programming part of it. I'm talking too loud. Right? It's not summer themed. It is a, a cute little robot man, um, and he comes to life when you turn his life dial. As you might imagine. All right, here we go. Hopefully, I'm going to turn it up. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> so he comes to life and he has his little heart red LED. I only used one output actually. Just have the red LED for his heart and the potentiometer as a sensor and the servo motor to have him go from dead robot to happy alive robot. Good little uh, blood drive robot. <laughs> so all of us here at this table work at the, the labs at COP, which is Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh's um, learning lab for teenagers. And everyone has background in like film and photography, graphic design, stuff like that. But our kind of weakest point has been programming and kind of robotics and the maker stuff. So I used a light sensor, an LED, uh, and um, a motor uh, in the back. Uh, for the arm, so I haven't had a chance to test this yet, so hopefully it does everything, <laughs> but I think it will be. <laughs> um, no. So basically, okay. <laughs> it's kind of inspired by a, an independent video game known as Fez, where this uh, two-dimensional character uh, somehow discovers uh, the th the third dimension, and so he like celebrates, and so this is uh, this kind of does that. So his fez is spinning now, and his eyes are vibrating, and then a bell's going <laughs> uh, And then it changes speed and direction. This is awesome. I had a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to actually doing this with, uh, with, with some youngsters and have them show me the ropes. So I went with the theme of summer as well, um, and made a spatula for flipping food items on a grill. Um, so I used one of the servos and light sensors, and then drop <laughs> when you drop something on the, uh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so when I don't know what to do, I just go back to my third grade doodles of flowers. Um, and what I did was attached um, a motor to the back of the flower, and have a distance sensor, and so when you get close to it, the flower starts to kind of vibrate and spin. Mm -hmm. And there's an LED light for flare. <laughs> so I'm looking for uh, new ways to do stuff in the classroom. And with English, I think there could be a lot of different opportunities for it. So. Uh, and I had originally uh, wanted to get the sensor so that when it got darker, uh, the sunglasses would, the sun would come up, the glasses would go down. But I didn't get that far. So, but I do have the sequence for just hopefully the sun will come up, the glasses will go down, the sun will go down, and then the glasses will go back up. Mm, and I have, of course, no <laughs> <in> order, but <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. That's the trickiest part, was trying to figure out this, the sequence of getting them to do it in the right order mm -hmm. and where, where to put your piece of uh, equipment to where it will move the certain way that you want. So that was just... That was the problem. If I would have had a little bit more time, I hope yeah. I would have hopefully figured it out. What I'll do now. There we go. It worked right that time. <laughs> um, I tried to make a car that would uh, go and stop. So let's see if it works. Let me just make sure all the wires are. Is the uh, the wood its little barrier to stop at? Yes. Oh, nice. The wood is. <laughs> and then the little robot bot freaks out. So. What is he saying? He's saying, he's, he's supposed to say go and then stop, but I think he's on a loop saying go over and over again. <laughs> so, um, I, I have some familiarity with the hummingbird. We just made, a, with the teens at the library, we made a minotaur that when the kids come up, they'll, it'll go raw, which was really cool. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm really impressed how versatile it is and how simple it is. And it's really awesome to see teens, they just gravitate to this kind of thing and then they pick it up right away. So it's very cool. My idea of summer was kite flying. Um, and I don't know about your neighborhood, but in mine, the ice cream truck loops mm -hmm. around and around and around. So I added that. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I use the sound sensor um, to give it, to blow into it, to give it some wind. Mm -hmm. But because I was talking already, it just started on its own. So. Okay. Um, then I use the LED and I use the serve, the server, servo, servo um, to get it to turn. So the trickiest part was learning um, how to make it stiff enough to stay on mm -hmm. without just kind of falling over. Um, and also learning the programming and the time sequencing, um, but testing it out. Being able to do it hands-on was really cool, so that you can listen oh, yeah. and learn all of that and then try it yourself. Mm -hmm. It was fun. All right, so mine's pretty simple in design, but um, my cat has fishing today, and he doesn't w realize he has a fish yet, and when he does, he's gonna get real excited, and he's going to reel it in. So that's basically what, it's what it does, and then his eyes flash. So I have a servo motor to actually pull the fish in and then the LED lights for the eyes and he's on a um, distance sensor and I kind of have to get pretty close to get him to work. Very nice. All right. I was curious how complicated it would be, and I can see how very easy it would be to work with students with this. Awesome. Okay, so my robot's a simple, it's just an elbow. Um, I'm a health and phys ed teacher, so it makes sense. Um, I just use a couple of LEDs to indicate whether the muscle that would be flexing would be an extensor or a flexor. And I hooked it up to uh, a servo and a potentiometer to control whether the arm opens or closes. So really just really simple. That's all it is. But I found that um, this is the first time personally using this and I'm impressed with how engaging of a tool this is for delivering content um, while also kind of sneaking in programming which I think is something the students really need to learn how to do. I used a servo motor for the arm and he will hit himself in the head <laughs> whenever you get close enough to taunt you. I used um, just a distance sensor and a LED light 
try light, and it changes colors too. Frodo Haggins. Frodo Haggins. Bobo Haggins. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> Frodo Haggins. Frodo Haggins. So that's pretty much it. If you stay close enough, um, these are all things that he said in the game. So, if you played the game, it'd probably make a lot more sense. <laughs> Little sun that I wanted to go from sunshine to sundown. Uh, I used three LEDs, um, red, yellow, and orange, and I wanted to go the transition being more red and orange and then to yellow and then go down back again. Uh, the sequences was a little complicated, so I don't know if it's really doing what I wanted to do, but uh, let's give it a try. Oh, and I have the servo also, which was supposed to go, but it's just going too fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's whoop. Two seconds and down. Yeah. A little, the little robot's like, oh my gosh, the sun is hot. Get yes. it off, get it off. <laughs> it, was, it was harder trying to get the, the transition between the combination of the colors, so having more yellow and more orange mm -hmm. or something like that. So um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out that. So. My inspiration was my cat, and um, just it's very, very simple. Um, hopefully, the uh, motion, just to kind of play with the cat. This should turn the cat's head. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, just, you know, should have to be, yeah. Anyways, and the eyes light up. So very basic for me, but a good starting point. Um, I did like the problem solving and figuring everything out. Um, I'm a school librarian, so I could see um, I'm always looking for ways to projects to collaborate with teachers. So I, I would love to to do have this and see what kids could do with it. <laughs> <Hey> kitty. <laughs> <laughs>